して今、私たちのメインプレゼンテーション。Hello, Internet. Welcome to Matt Presents, where I talk about my movie nights every other week. Well, every week right now, but probably after next week, we'll go back to every other week.、Uh, I asked recently if this is like taking up too much space on. The Matt Presents channel, if maybe I should move this to a second channel.、Um, by and large, people seem to like it here. A few people were okay with the second channel, but I think for the time being, we're going to leave it here. So, this week we had a Criterion Japanese horror triple feature, starting with the classic Haosu.、Uh, of course, you know, the previous two weeks we watched House and House 2, the second story, so of course we had to watch The Other House.、Um, sure, are a lot of horror movies with house in the title. I mean, there's a lot of、uh, there's a lot of haunted house movies, first off, but then there's like House of Wax and House of a Thousand Corpses. Houseu, which I did not steal from the library. I know it says Dallas Public Library. I, I bought this on Amazon. Presumably from the library? But maybe someone stole it from the library and then sold it to me? I don't know if Amazon would allow that, but. Fuck it, man. I, I got the DVD for cheap. Came, it comes with the booklet. It's got the booklet in there. So, that's what's really important. I got a Criterion movie. I got the booklet. Who cares if it's secondhand from the library? I also have the t shirt, in case you hadn't noticed, I'm matching today.、Uh, Houseu, a very wild Japanese haunted house movie. It's the story of these seven girls who, for summer vacation, they go to visit、uh, one of them's aunt who lives out in the country. And it turns out her aunt is an evil witch who. Kills young unmarried women because her husband died in the war, or her, her fiance died in the war before she could get married. So now she gets mad at, at unmarried girls and kills them. Why unmarried girls? Why not married girls? Married girls are the ones you should be jealous of. I ask that if, as if any part of this movie makes sense. This movie makes no fucking sense. I mean, it does.、There's, you can follow the story. It's not that hard. But it's very wild, very wacky, very surrealist.、Um, the Japanese have this sort of culture of, like, the horror of the absurd, which we don't get much in America, but it really works. It's, like, genuinely, I find the weird, insane shit way scarier than. Like a normal American horror movie. Because, you know, I know what's gonna happen in like a slasher movie. There's only so many things a slasher can do. Anything could fucking happen in one of these movies. They're so insane. Although, if you think Japanese horror is wild, I've seen a little Chinese horror, and the Chinese also have really weird horror movies. Um. I looked this week. Centipede Horror is on YouTube. For five years, Centipede Horror has been on YouTube. So I don't think it's getting taken down soon. That might be a recommendation in the near future. I. Maybe don't hold your breath, but. Centipede Horror. Great movie. One of the most obscure movies I've ever seen. One of the weirdest movies I've ever seen, and that's coming from me. The guy who does nothing but watch weird movies. House, of course, is a ton of fun. It's great.、Um, one of my favorite horror movies, horror comedies.、Um, probably my favorite Japanese horror movie, honestly. I, my, I'm, jumping a gun. I'm jumping the gun on that one a little. We'll talk more about favorite Japanese horror movies in a bit. There's a really great sense of unrealness to this movie.、Uh, like, in some ways, it feels almost like a fourth wall break, even.、Uh, or, like, like it, it'll break the fourth wall occasionally.
Um, cause, cause it feels very fake. It feels very manufactured. Down to the fact that, like, the characters' names are just, like, personality traits about them. Right? Like, uh, the, the one, the, the strong one is Kung Fu, and the fat one is Mac. She's not that fat. She's, like, all, basically the same size as the others. She just eats all the time. The fat one is, is called Mac. Mm-hmm. The smart one is called Professor. The the musical one is called Melody. <laughs> one of them is just called Gorgeous. The main character is just called Gorgeous. And it does do a good job subverting the final girl trope, because Gorgeous is clearly set out as the main character, and she is not the final girl. She she dies partway through the movie. Other than that, there's a lot of big, like, panoramic scenery shots, but a, a lot of them are clearly matte paintings, with, like, the characters inserted at the bottom. And one of the funniest moments in the movie is there's just this, like, big shot, and it's clear there's, like, a big matte painting behind the characters, and then they're, like, all getting out of a bus, and then the bus drives away, and there's a billboard right behind them, and the billboard has the exact same matte painting on it. So yeah, like, the the movie feels fake. It's, uh, like, very deliberately supposed to seem fake. There's, like, a lot of lesbian shit in this movie. Um, and, like, like, none of it is explicit. None of it is, like, directly addressed within the movie. But it's really obvious. Like, I make jokes about characters being secretly gay constantly. These characters are not secretly gay. They're openly gay. The movie just won't say it. Like, Gorgeous and this other girl are in this relationship. That if it were a boy and a girl, the way it's filmed the way they talk to each other, the way it looks. If it were a boy and a girl, you'd just assume they were dating. But it's two girls. So I just assume they're dating. Like, they never say, hey, we are dating. But it's obvious they are. But, like, even on top of that, then there's scenes like... One of the girls turns to her friends and is like, Oh, I'm all sweaty. Do you want to take a shower? Like, together? (laughs) I'm like... Oof. Oof. Hard, hard lesbian vibes in this movie. I don't know, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It's very funny. It is a comedy movie. I, I, I consider it a comedy movie, at least. I assume that's how the Japanese intended it, because there, there is a lot of humor to it. Um, it's very funny, very fun. Highly recommend House. So I have this box set from the Eclipse series which is put out by Criterion and Janus Films. Uh, I kind of like the Eclipse series. This is the only one I own. But one thing I do not like about the Eclipse series is how the box is designed. Because the hole's not on the side. It's, It's not on either side. It's on the top and bottom. So if you pick it up, all the DVDs fall out. Let me show you this. Let me... This is how a box set is supposed to be. Criterion. You're supposed to be able to pull DVDs out from the side, Criterion. Not have them fall out everywhere when you pick up the box. When horror came to Shochiku, um, much like in America, how like four or five film studios make like every movie, I, th- I think Disney, Sony, Warner Brothers, and Universal. I might be forgetting one, but those four, and maybe one more, account for, like, 90% of the films that get made. There was another one, it was Fox, but that got bought out by Disney, so now four companies make 90% of the movies in this country. Much like that, in Japan, they have, like, four big movie studios that make almost everything in Japan. They have Toho, who's the biggest... Who's known because they had Godzilla. They made Godzilla. That's what put them on the map. Uh, they also made Haosu, incidentally. Um, so, Toho, great resume. The other three are Toei, Shochiku, 
and Katanawa? Is it Katanawa? I don't remember what the third one's called. This box set is four movies from the late 60s. It's the first couple of horror movies made by Shochiku. And this is one of them. Goke, the Body Snatcher from Hell. This is the shit I'm talking about, okay? I have yet to recommend a movie I haven't seen that I enjoyed until now. This is the first one. This is the one I'm like, yes, I highly recommend this movie I had not seen previous. In case you're just joining us, in case you missed the first video, uh, when I recommend these films, I've seen the first one, I haven't seen the second one, the third one, it's up in the air. This week I have, uh, but about half the time I haven't. So I had not seen Gokei Body Snatcher from Hell going into this, but I loved it. I highly recommend this film. It's so great. It's so much fun. Maybe I'm biased. I love Japanese horror, but it's so weird and wacky and, and enjoyable. Uh, comes highly recommended by me. It's, this plane gets grounded because of, uh, like, an alien invasion. There's, like, an alien invasion going on. So this plane crashes, like, in the middle of the desert. And one of the passengers, it's, it's just been discovered. This is, like, the worst plane ride in history because it's, it's just, like, a bunch of criminals. It's, it's, like, a politician, a guy who sells weapons, a guy who had a bomb, who's gonna hijack the plane with a bomb, and then a completely unrelated guy who just assassinated a senator and still has the gun in his bag from assassinating the senator. So the guy who just assassinated the senator runs out as soon as the plane lands, because he doesn't want to, like, get arrested or anything, and he gets... Like, this alien life form gets absorbed into his body. It, like, makes a hole in his head and absorbs itself into his body. And so then he goes off and, like, he becomes a vampire. It's an alien invasion vampire movie. I should have paired this up with, uh, Planet of the Vampires. There we go. There's a double feature for you. Planet of the Vampires, Goke, Body Snatcher from Hell. So he goes around and, like, sucks the other survivor's blood um, for a lot of the movie. And then they kill him, so the alien takes over another person, and... Um, kind of a little, a little reminiscent of the thing. A little reminiscent of the thing. And then in the ending, uh, it's kind of, kind of some Alien 2 on Earth vibes. Um... Do you remember that movie that I reviewed? I'll put a link to it. Uh, like, at the end of Alien 2, they, they like, defeat the alien, but then they run out, they, they go back to the city, and everyone else has been killed. Everyone else is dead. So, and that's how Gokei Body Snatcher from Hell ends. Everyone else, everyone else on Earth has been killed by these aliens. So that's fun. The, the one weird scene to me is, like, they're trapped in, like, this canyon, right? And there's a part in the canyon where there's this, just this, like, constant rock slide going on. And I thought the implication was that the aliens were causing the rock slide. Because it didn't seem like a natural rock slide. They were, like, the rocks were just flying over. And it kept, it kept going the whole runtime of the movie. Like, any time they would go back to this place, there was a rock slide going on. But then, then like... The alien is chasing the two surviving humans, and they chase him into the rock slide, and he gets killed by the rock slide, and I, I thought the rock slide was controlled by the aliens. How did they kill the alien with the thing the alien was controlling? Very fun. Very fun movie. Comes recommended by me. I don't know why it's called Goke Body Snatcher from Hell. Um, Goke Body Snatcher from Hell is a weird title. That was almost definitely, like some American grindhouse theater title for this. Uh, it has the original title on the back. I'm gonna try my best to pronounce this. I'm gonna butcher it. Kyuketsuki Gokemidoro. 
Uh, Goku Midoro is the name of the alien species in the movie. There is no character called Goku. There is no character called Goku. The aliens are the Goku Midori. And somehow they shortened the name of the alien species to just Goku. And then that's the title. It's it's Goku Body Snatcher from Hell. Not from hell. Not at all from hell. From space, actually. Goku Body Snatcher from space. Be more specific next time. That's clearly a, a very mistranslated title that was probably made by some, like, American exploitation distribution company. They're like, hey, uh, we call it Body Snatcher from Hell, and it sounds creepier, even though it's less accurate. Uh, the liner notes in here, there's some liner notes. Um, it says this is like a... F it says it's a favorite of Quentin Tarantino's. I can't find a source for that. Uh, maybe? Maybe this is one of Tarantino's favorites, but I, do I don't find a source for that. It does, on the other hand, point out that one of the nicknames fans have bestowed upon it is Vagina Face Apocalypse, which, um, I'll put up a picture of the alien, or the guy possessed by the alien. Maybe? I kind of see it, but also feels like a stretch. Feels like a bit of a stretch. That's Goke the Body Snatcher from Hell. I recommend it. And I also recommend our final film, Jigoku, which had its own wild American grindhouse title. It was called Sinners at the Gates of Hell, which, to be fair, is a much more accurate title. Because <laughs> it is. It's about sinners at the gates of hell. Um, Jigoku means hell. Jigoku is the Japanese word for hell. Or the Japanese equivalent of hell, whichever way you want to put that. So this this sometimes goes under the title of just hell, but the more common English title is Sinners at the Gates of Hell. Or just Jigoku, the original Japanese title. Um, great movie. Great little movie. It's about um, the, this guy is out drunk driving with his friend. He gets drunk and he's driving with his friend. And he hits a member of the Yakuza. And they kind of try to cover it up. Play like it didn't happen. Uh, but then, you know, the Yakuza get involved. And somehow, like, everyone involved. There's, like, there's like tons of people somehow involved with this one death. And all of them die. The, the whole Yakuza gang gets poisoned, and the two guys who are involved get, like... Well, one of them one of them kills the other. The guy driving the car kills the other just to cover up his crime. And then he gets strangled to death by the mother of the guy he hit. And she kills herself. So now everyone's dead. And... Well, like an hour and fifteen into the movie, everyone's dead. And then there's just this, like trippy as all hell, violent as all hell, like, 20-minute sequence of them in hell, being tortured f for the crimes they did when they were alive, for, for the sins they committed in the world of the living. And it's, like, shockingly violent for a film that came out in 1960. This is a film from 1960. Which, uh, 1960 was the year movies started to get a lot more violent worldwide for some reason. Uh, in America we had Psycho, and then Britain had Peeping Tom, France had Eyes Without a Face, which I have a criterion of as well. Eyes Without a Face, Criterion Edition. I should get the Blu-ray, but I have the DVD. France had Eyes Without a Face. Uh, that was really the start of, like, 
Italian horror with uh, Black Sunday came out in 1960. But of all of them, Jigoku is far and away the goriest. Just for the end, just for like the last 20 minutes, it's not even that violent up to that point. It's mostly like poisonings and guys getting thrown off bridges. It's, it's all very pretty tame violence. And then they get to hell and it's like, oh, rip off all his skin. You know, tear him limb from limb. Jab a, jab a, jab a spike through his neck. It's, like, it's kind of fucked up by today's standards. Like, audiences today could probably watch this and be like, Jesus Christ, that's violent. And this came out in 1960! There are parts of it that remind me of Carnival of Souls. Like, there's, there's specific shots and specific scenes that I'm like, this looks like Carnival of Souls. And it did come out a little before Carnival of Souls, but here's the thing. This movie was pretty hard to find in America, for a while at least. Um, now there's a Criterion disc of it. Um, it's on Criterion streaming service. Highly recommend that, by the way. The Criterion channel, highly recommended by me. Um, so it's pretty easy to find nowadays, but... Bet between when this came out in 1960 and when Carnival of Souls came out in 1965, I have a Criterion release of Carnival of Souls too. I'm not. I'm not getting up to show you my Carnival of Souls Blu-ray. Um, between 1960 and 1965, when Carnival of Souls came out, it's very unlikely anyone involved with Carnival of Souls saw this movie. Even though it feels like it was an inspiration. So maybe, maybe one of them saw it. Maybe one of them was just like a huge film buff and would go to like the foreign cinemas all the time, see like the, the weird import films. Maybe one of them did see this. Maybe Herc Harvey or the writer, I forget the writer on Carnival of Souls. Maybe one of them went and saw this, but I kind of doubt it. I think it's just coincidental. I wouldn't be surprised to find out it was an inspiration for Carnival of Souls. I just doubt it. I do think it was an inspiration on a lot of uh, later horror films. I think... Cause I think uh, like Sam Raimi, I think, outright said he was a fan of this movie. And... Uh, it, it bears some resemblance to, like, Dawn of the Dead. I could see it being an inspiration for Dawn of the Dead as well. So, last week I asked you, what's your favorite Japanese horror film? And I think my favorite is House. Honestly, I think Houseu is my favorite Japanese horror film. Um, I do quite like Ringu. I do quite like Jigoku as well. Um, but I got more than one answer this week, so let's see what you guys had to say. So, Lino kind of agrees with me. They said, Haosu, Audition, and The Happiness of the Katakuris are his favorites. How I agree with Haosu. I've not seen The Happiness of the Katakuris. I looked it up. It's a, it's a Takashi Maike film. So, might be worth looking into. We might, we might do a Takashi Maike night. Like a Takashi Maike triple feature. So Audition. Audition is also Takashi Maike. I need to rewatch Audition. I don't think I got Audition the first time I saw it. I didn't like it that much, but I, I also feel like I didn't get it. I, I need a rewatch of Audition. So maybe if we do a Takashi Maike night, I'll show Audition. Although, mm, my memory of it is that it is not a very fun movie. Might be better to put on one of his more fun movies, like, uh, like Blade of the Immortal, or... That Seven Samurai ripoff he did. Actually, yeah, Dead or, the Dead or Alive trilogy is Takashi Maike. We're gonna watch all three of these. We're gonna watch this whole trilogy. Not today, but be warned. Dead or Alive, it's coming. So, um, I'll agree with House. Gonna disagree with Audition, but again, I need to rewatch it. Have not seen Happiness of the Cat Curious. Definitely on my list. Definitely will be on my radar.
Henry Koslick says the Ringu book series was better than the movies, but that's his favorite Japanese movie, a uh, Japanese horror movie anyway. So, uh, yeah, I agree. Ringu's very good. I haven't seen any of the sequels. I have seen the American remake, and I think it is acceptable. I think... <laughs> I think if you're if you somehow have a problem with watching foreign films, the American remake of Ringu is good enough. But if you have a problem with foreign films, get over yourself. Just watch the Japanese version because the Japanese version is better. It's better. Um, although he says and the new remake. Um. The more recent ring, rings, plural, that's what it was called, I didn't see, I heard very bad things about. Um, so I, I hope, I assume he means the older American remake, unless there was a Japanese remake, maybe he means a Japanese remake. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like there was a more recent one. And then, uh, good old Abby coming through with us for another comment. She says, I, ha I have a lot of free time for answering YouTubers' questions in the comments section right now. Thank you. Thank you for your answers. We are finally getting some more answers this week. If you, if you want me to respond to you, j just leave a comment. I'll, it'll probably get featured in the video. Because I get so few comments on these. Uh, but she says Juan is her favorite J-horror movie. Although she also mentions Akira as her favorite anime horror movie. I never really thought of Akira as a horror movie. I guess it is. It is pretty creepy, pretty fucked up. Maybe that uh, maybe that counts as a horror movie. I don't know. I, I guess we'll count it. Uh, and, and House is the one that's the most fun to show to other people. Yes, House is a lot of fun to show to other people. Um, I have not seen Juan... Uh, the Grudge. It's uh, the film The Grudge is based on. Um, offhand, I want to say Juan means grudge, but don't hold me to that. Um, I have not seen Juan, so maybe that's one worth looking at in the future. We could do like a, a J-horror triple feature. We'll do uh, Ringu and um, Juan. I don't know what the third movie in that set would be. But, uh, definitely, definitely I will be considering pairing Ringu and Juan up for a future Matt Presents screening. So this week the question is, what's your favorite David Cronenberg movie? Because guess what? We're doing our first director-based triple feature. It's three David Cronenberg movies. Because I am a big fan of David Cronenberg. But I haven't seen his most popular movies. Somehow I've managed to miss his most popular movies. Um, so, first we're going to watch Dead Zone. Uh, Stephen King's Dead Zone from like 80, uh, 83. With uh, Christopher Walken. And then we're going to watch Scanners. I've never seen Scanners. And then we're going to watch Videodrome. I've never seen Videodrome either. Um, nor have I seen his other two most popular movies, The Fly or The Brood. Um, in fact, I, I just got The Fly from the library. I requested it like a month ago, but just recently the, li the library's been closed for a while, and just recently they've started doing curbside pickup. So this movie I requested several months ago just now showed up. So probably by the next time we talk, I'll have seen The Fly. But, uh, as of this recording, I haven't seen The Fly. I haven't seen The Brood either. I've seen the original The Fly, the Vincent Price The Fly, but... I haven't seen the, the David Cronenberg one, which seems to be the better received of the two. So, uh, yeah, before next time, uh, our, our movies for tonight are... The Dead Zone, Scanners, and Videodrome. David Cronenberg, Triple Feature. And maybe someday we'll do another one. Uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say right here, my favorite Cronenberg movie right now 
is Naked Lunch. I love Naked Lunch. Uh, any one of these two, or that one that I'm not showing movies, could top that in the next week. So, until next time, I'm Matt. Have a great day.